What's up guys, my name's Stu, and today we are finally looking at my Lower Decks theme build. With the release of the California class, I decided to do a fully Lower Decks theme build. Not only does this mean I'm going to be using one of the ships from Lower Decks, but I'm also using several consoles and traits that are based off of Lower Decks. Because the California and the Parliament are both Miracle Worker cruisers, I also thought this would be a good opportunity to fully test out Exceed Rated Limits as a firing mode. For my Lower Decks theme build, obviously I've got to use a Lower Decks ship, so I am using the California class. However, this is not the only Lower Decks ship currently in the game. Fortunately, the Parliament class isn't that different from the California class stats-wise, so this build will fit pretty well on either ship. The build itself is actually going to be pretty similar to my TNG era theme builds. Lower Decks being post-TNG and very much inspired by the next generation, a lot of the effects are very similar, which is why for the weapons I'm using Agony Phasers. They look and sound virtually identical to the phasers used in the next generation, and also Lower Decks, and they have a better proc than the standard phasers. Though if you'd prefer to stick to standard phasers, that's fine too. I've also got the Terran Task Force phaser for its proc. It looks pretty similar to normal phasers as well. It looks a little different from the others, but it's pretty hard to notice. But if it's noticeable enough that it bothers you, you could swap this out for another Agony phaser or standard phaser, or you can use the Prolonged phaser, which has the same visual effect. Speaking of the Prolonged Engagement set, I'm using the Prolonged Photon Torpedo, mostly because it looks like a standard Photon Torpedo, but also because it has a 180 degree firing arc, which makes it much easier to use with a broadside setup like this, which I'm using because this is a 4-4 cruiser you can find the prolonged set available in the Phoenix Prize Store. And the last weapon in the back is the Trilithium Enhanced Omnidirectional Beam Array, which is here because its proc is a chance for a haste buff. I'm also using the console for this set, so that two-piece bonus is giving me a further haste buff. The Trilithium set is rewarded from the episode Beyond the Nexus. Next is my usual core setup for an energy weapon build, a colony deflector for the buffs to crit chance and crit severity, the competitive engine for the speed buffs, a spire warp core for the reduced weapons power cost and the amp mod, and the Discovery Reputation Shield for the damage buff to enemy shields. And the devices are also my usual setup for an energy weapon build. Energy Amplifier for the bonus damage to my energy weapons. Deuterium Surplus for the speed buff. Reactive Armor Catalyst in case I need a heal. Kobayashi Maru Transponder for the random buffs. And Red Matter Capacitor for the buff to all my power levels. And because with 5 device slots, I'm kinda spoiled for choice here. Here in the consoles is where things start to get a little different because I've had to make room for a lot of the lower decks gear, which I have over here in my first 3 engineering consoles. The first is Terraforming Emulation, which comes off of this ship, the California. It functions a lot like Eject Warp Plasma, in that when you activate it, you'll expel a bunch of terraforming gas. This terraforming gas, however, will be quite a bit more volatile than standard Warp Plasma, because it deals a decent amount of physical damage to any enemies caught within it, and enemies destroyed in the gas will just create more of it. This console is a reference to the episode Moist Vessel from the first season of Lower Decks. That's the one where the Cerritos and another California class, the Merced, are tasked with towing an ancient generational ship that has all this terraforming fluid on it. It gets out of control, almost terraforms the Cerritos, and ends up destroying the Merced. So what happens to the Merced is what you're going to be doing to enemy ships with this console. The next console is Controlled Gravimetric Demolition off of the Parliament class. When you activate this console, it'll set up a big AoE field around your primary target. But you actually have to click this console twice to activate its full effect. That second click activates the Gravimetric Explosion Beam, which will deal kinetic damage to anything within the field and pull up to 9 enemies into it. This console is a reference to the episode Cupid's Errant Arrow, where the Cerritos and the Parliament are tasked with the controlled demolition of one of the moons of a planet, because the moon is threatening the inhabitants of the planet with extinction. They're held up with the demolition because apparently there are people living on the moon, and the Cerritos is trying to negotiate with them, and it turns out to just be one rich dude who doesn't want to move. The platforms that generate that field that destroy the moon, that's what you'll be doing to enemy ships with this. The last of the Lower Decks themed consoles is Unstable Planetoid Detonation, which can be found in the Lobi store. All this console really does is just chucks a big hunk of debris from an unstable planetoid that hits your enemy target. It'll explode when reaching your target, dealing some kinetic damage, and is able for a short time. I'm pretty sure this is a reference to the Lower Decks Season 2 finale, First First Contact, where the USS Archimedes is heavily damaged by an exploding unstable planetoid. The Archimedes almost crashes into an uninhabited planet before being saved by the Cerritos. The effect of the exploding unstable planetoid in that episode resembles the hunk of debris used in this console. The rest of these aren't exactly standard on my energy weapon builds, but I have used them before in previous videos. The first is Enhanced Plasma Manifold off of the Tier 1 Oberth, which gives a nice buff to my non-weapons power subsystems. This is here because of a starship trait that I'm also using, and if you've been here before, you probably already know which one. This next one is Reinforced Armaments, which, like I said earlier, I am using for the two-piece bonus with the Trilithium Omni. The rest of these are pretty standard on most of my builds. We got the Domino and the DPRM, my two usual Lobi consoles, Tachyokinetic Converter and Bioneural Infusion Circuits, 
plus Lorca's custom fire control, sensor suspension burst, and a couple of vulnerability locators. I did have to sacrifice a vulnerability locator for some of these universal consoles, but even in doing so, I've still managed to keep my critical chance above 50%, which is honestly pretty good. Honestly, I might still swap one of the locators out for an exploiter, because my crit chance would still be above 50%, but I could also get a bit more of my crit severity. The specializations are still the same as always, Intel is my primary and Temporal is my secondary, that way I get access to Space Flanking and Entropic Rider. Normally when it comes to my theme builds, I usually don't stray too far from the meta when it comes to the traits, but since a good portion of the Lower Decks gear are personal traits, I decided to change that this time. It's helpful that Boimler Effect is already a common fixture on a lot of my builds, as part of my Bridge Officer cooldown reduction. Boimler Effect is a reference to the episode Temporal Edict. Boimler helps Captain Freeman realize that her strict rules and scheduling are interfering with crew performance, so she institutes a new rule to help loosen up those restrictions, which she calls the Boimler Effect, which is funny because it's literally the exact opposite of how Boimler works. Next is Vitruvian Explosives, which has a chance to add some radiation damage to your projectile weapons. I actually can't remember which episode this one is in reference to, so if anyone remembers, let me know in the comments down below. And the third new trait is Make It Go. This trait is actually more interesting than I first thought it would be. The effects of this trait start out as a damage resistance buff, but after 30 seconds, they are completely random. You can see here in the tooltip every possible buff that you can get from this trait. You can get a damage buff or a damage resistance buff, a buff to your speed or your inertia rating, or a buff to one of your power levels. It's completely random and will change every 30 seconds. If you've noticed any of my power levels changing during this video, that's from one of the random buffs of this trait. The downside is that the buff of this trait will not show up on your buff bar, so it's kind of hard to tell what's getting buffed at any given moment. Make It Go is obviously a reference to the Pack Leds, who reveal themselves as one of the main antagonists for Lower Decks in the Season 1 finale, No Small Parts. There's also another Lower Decks themed personal trait that I'm not using on this build, Improvised Boarding Party, which is also a reference to the Season 1 finale, from when Shax and Rutherford take a shuttle to board the Pack Led ship in order to destroy it. All that trait does is add some kinetic damage to the Bridge Officer ability Boarding Party, and I really didn't feel like spending 160 low buy on a personal trait I'm probably never going to use again. The rest of these personal traits are from my standard setup. Adaptive Offense for the buff to crit chance that turns into a crit severity buff. Context is for Kings and Fleet Coordinator, both of which give bonus damage buffs. Innocuous for the buff to crit severity and reduce threat generation. Inspirational Leader for the chance to buff most of my starship skills. Intel Agent Attaché to lower the cooldown on my captain's abilities. Terran Targeting Systems for the crit severity buff. And Unconventional Systems to lower the cooldowns on my universal consoles. For the Starship Traits, I really didn't get very thematic with this because, well, there's only two Starship Traits for Lower Decks, and frankly, neither of them are very good. Lower Decks Initiative off the California class only reduces the cooldown of your Commander-level Bridge Officer abilities, so it's really underwhelming compared to normal Bridge Officer cooldown methods, like Boimler Effect or an Ox to Bat build. And Efficient Demolition off the Parliament is just another buff to your power levels. Though I guess I could have used that because I am using Onboard Dilithium or Crystallizer. The extra power levels would feed into that trait rather nicely. Honestly, thinking about it now, I'm kind of regretting not using it. It wouldn't make much of an impact for my damage output, but swapping out Strike from Shadows for it probably wouldn't hurt me that much either. Anyway, as for the traits I'm actually using, first is Vanguard Specialist off the legendary Gemhadar attack ship. This is an Exceed Rated Limits build, so this is here to extend the duration of Exceed Rated Limits. Basically, this is here for the same reason we use Super Weapon Ingenuity on a Beam Overload build, or Withering Barrage on a Cannon Scatter Volley build. Exceed Rated Limits is all about buffing your haste, so I decided to keep going with that theme for this build. So first we have Emergency Weapon Cycle off the Arbiter, Calm Before the Storm off the Cardassian Intel Flight Deck Carrier, and Heart of Soul off the Temporal Warships, all of which will further buff my weapon's haste. Deadly Appearances also buffs your Firing Cycle haste, but I don't have anything on this build that'll trigger it. So instead I went with Strike from Shadows to give me a little bit more crit chance and bonus damage. Though as I said, I'm kind of regretting not using Efficient Demolition here just for the sake of the theme. And last is Onboard Dilithium or Crystallizer, which I kind of already went over and I don't think you guys want to hear me repeat myself. This trait does come from the lockboxes, but it's not attached to a starship so it's pretty easy to find on the exchange for pretty cheap. And when paired with the Enhanced Plasma Manifold off the Tier 1 Oberth, it makes for a nice budget setup for some extra bonus damage buffs. In the Space Traits is, again, my usual setup for an energy weapon build. Advanced Targeting Systems for the Crit Severity, Tyler's Duality and Precision for the Crit Chance, Magnified Firepower for the bonus damage to my weapons, and Controlled Countermeasures for the bonus damage against controlled targets. Next is the Bridge Officer Seating. In this Lieutenant Commander Universal Seat, I am using as a Tactical Seat, in which I have Chemocyte Lace Weaponry for some extra radiation damage with my weapons, Attack Pattern Beta for the debuff, 
And because this is also a America worker seat, mixed armament synergy, which will buff my alternating weapons types, depending on which one I use at the time. I'm also using the Ensign Universal seat as a tactical seat, in which I'm using Torp Spread 1. I'm using the Lieutenant Universal as a science seat, in which I'm using Tractor Beam and Scramble Sensors, because they are both unconventional systems triggers. In the Commander Engineering slash Miracle Worker seat, first I'm using Destabilized Warp Core, which applies a radiation damage over time effect to a target, and if that target dies while this effect is still active, it'll buff the damage their Warp Core Breach does, which can be kind of helpful in clearing out mobs of smaller ships. Next is Emergency Power to Weapons, to buff my energy weapons and to trigger Emergency Weapon Cycle. There are Sensor Bands to give a bonus damage buff to my energy weapons based on the distance to my target and exceed rate of limits, which is my firing mode for this build. This will set my weapons power drain to zero and buff my firing cycle haste on my energy weapons by 100%. However, it'll also deal a small amount of electrical damage over time to myself and gradually lower my power levels over time. In the Lieutenant Commander Engineering seat, first is emergency power to engines to buff my speed, emit unstable warp bubble because it's an unconventional systems trigger, and eject warp plasma one because this is actually also an unconventional systems trigger. Plus using this and the terraforming emulation console pair pretty well together because they work pretty much the same way. Now if you'd rather use beam overload or fire at will instead of exceed rate of limits, you can easily switch up this build to accommodate that. Just put beam overload or fire at will in this lieutenant commander seat, and then you can swap out exceed rate of limits for mixed armament three. Also don't forget to put the appropriate extension trait where I have Vanguard Specialist. In the duty officers, first is 24 of 47 for the buff to my power levels and to my crit chance, 27 of 47 for the crit severity buff, three projectile officers that have a chance to buff my crit chance or severity anytime I fire a torpedo, and 39 of 47 to help with my bridge officer cooldowns. Before we move on to the ISC and parse, I've also included something else in this video. A number of you have commented how you'd rather see me test builds in other things besides ISE, largely because it's very hard to see in ISE. The lighting in that map is really washed out, and all the crazy EPG effects make it really difficult to see anything. But ISE is still the favorite testing method for DPS. So while I'll still be including a recording for that, I will also put in a recording of a wanted patrol. That'll give you guys a chance to see this build in action on its own. If this is something you guys like, let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to include it in future build videos. But first, the ISE.
207k. No matter how ridiculous my theme builds get, I always manage to do over 200k. This makes me happy. I was actually a little worried that this won't even break the 200k mark because Exceed Rate of Limits doesn't really have the power that Beam Overload does. All it does is give you a huge haste buff, whereas Beam Overload literally multiplies your damage output. My Lower Decks consoles can all be found under the pet section of the parse analysis. The Terraforming Immolation console did over 20k, that's actually kind of impressive. The console deals physical damage, which is a type of exotic damage, so this probably would have done even better on an actual EPG build. But 20k just for a theme console? That's honestly impressive. The other two, however, were significantly less impressive. Demolition Field only did about 2k, and Unstable Planetoid did even less. Eject Warp Plasma did more damage than either of these consoles, that's really unimpressive. Now, just for the sake of comparison, I also did an ISE run using Beam Overload, and the results were also rather surprising. I was expecting the Beam Overload build to do significantly higher, but I only did about 20k more than the Exceed Rated Limits build. We went in with the same team on the same builds, the only changes were that I changed to Beam Overload instead of Exceed Rated Limits, and it only did 20k higher. Though somehow Augie managed to do 100k higher than the previous run on the same build. Don't know how that works.
that was my Lower Decks theme build. I really hope you got a kick out of it because it was not a cheap build to put together. Like I said in the parse analysis, I was really surprised that Beam Overload did only about 20k DPS better than Exceed Rated Limits. Beam Overload really should have done quite a bit better, but I think it's partially because that this isn't a high-end DPS build. This is a theme build on an engineering heavy cruiser. It's really not designed for high-end DPS. I may revisit the idea of testing these two abilities just for the sake of comparison on something better suited for it, like the Lexington. Not sure if I'll make a full video out of that though, just because I've already got such a backlog building up. So if you guys really want to see that, let me know in the comments down below. While you're down there, be sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. If you'd like to further support the channel, you can hit the join button or the super thanks button or find the link to the merch store in the description. Either way, thank you so much for watching. My name's Stu and I will see you guys next time.